So what you're looking at in front of you is a homemade turbo ramjet engine that I modeled after the J58 from Pratt & Whitney that's in the SR71 Blackbird. The way it functions basically is this, is that we have a turbojet engine right here that's powering a dry fan at the end of it that's turning a compressor fan up here in the intake housing. That compressor fan is being driven by basically the fire generated inside the combustion chamber right here. Now what we have that's different on this engine is that at the aft side or the back side of our turbojet engine we have a ramjet engine installed just like the Pratt & Whitney engine and we take air from the intake cowling here from our compressor. Any extra pressure that's generated that's not being used in the turbojet now bypasses through a series of reed valves through the top plate of our diffuser and then out through our bypass tubes and into the ramjet engine portion here. Now we also have a different faceplate that goes on this that allows for direct ramjet injection through another series of reed valves, but we're gonna test that later on. Right now I just wanna see if the compressor itself generates enough extra pressure to overwhelm the reed valves that are in the top plate of that diffuser to be able to power up our ramjet engine. Now once this air is bypassed from our compressor into the ramjet, what we have is a fuel ring. And that fuel ring has a V, basically bent uh, metal V just out in front of the fuel ring that creates what's called a flame holder section. And all it's doing is creating a pocket, a dead air space or a vacuum pocket behind in that V channel. And it's just a ringed V and that's called the flame holder. And that's gonna hold the fire inside the ramjet engine. Now air passing between the outer case, which you'll see in the second part construction video, air passing in the outer case will be directed through this line of holes right here at the end of the engine. We have an afterburner and then we have a tertiary opening here that'll gather extra air from outside of the engine and throw that through the last final reducing collar there. We have an intake spike up here in the front. The one that you'll see at the end construction video, the front end of that spike actually has a ring of holes, a couple sets of holes running around it here. And what it's doing is gathering up and removing any high density air that gathers against the surface of the spike. And it's gonna pull that inside of this intake spike cavity and out through this output hole outside the engine. Now we're also using this to hold a six volt 20,000 RPM starter motor that'll be used to run this thing. So the air that's drawn off through those holes will actually cool my electric motor as it's pulled out of the engine. All right, so let me just quickly here walk you around the engine so you can see it. Give you kind of a view looking down the entire thing. There you go. You can see the intake right here. If I zoom in inside of there, you can see the intake fan. We have the turbojet engine portion of the engine right there. We have the ramjet engine portion of the engine here. Our afterburner, our tertiary opening. Let me go ahead and give you an angle so you can see the air draw gap between our reduction collar from our ramjet engine to our tertiary reduction collar here. You can see the end of the tertiary area there, there is secondary reduction collar end. Let me give you a look up inside the engine so you can see the dry fan. The air intakes there from the bypass tubes. Stay tuned now for the two-part build series and how I put together this little turbo ramjet engine.